Hey, this is Pastor Glenn. Good morning, and uh, it's probably afternoon by now, but I don't know when you'll see this. I thank God for you all. I hope that uh, some people that know me are watching this, and I hope a lot that aren't and don't know me are. Um, we've been we talked about holiness a couple of weeks ago, and uh, I'm going to stay on this subject for a while. I, I want you to understand uh, what the Bible means by holiness and uh, righteous living, holy living. Uh, why we we're called to it. I think that um, I mentioned a couple of reasons. Uh, one is because we profess to be Christians, and to be a Christian is to be Christ-like. I mentioned that before. And so to be, if we're going to be Christ-like, Lord, we have to be holy, right? Christ, Christ was sinless. And so uh, you, there's plenty out there that say it's impossible. There's pastors that tell me, you've got to be crazy. You can't, can't be sin-free. And um, I'm not sure we'll ever will be until we are um, we join Christ again, and of course at that point we'll have to be. But I, I will say that it is our calling, our duty uh, to try to be to live righteous and holy lives. And for us to do it as Christians, it requires a little different flow. Uh, before I get into it, let's pray. Father, I thank you, Lord, for friends that wanted to see this, and I thank you, Lord, for those that are curious and interested in what holiness is all about. I ask you, God, to just open their eyes and ears and hearts and change their hearts and let them see that um, what I'm talking about is possible, and perhaps it's what you uh, want us to aspire to. I ask you, God, to uh, touch each lost person out there, and, and I pray that someone will be saved by watching this. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, my fear is that the church is apostate. My fear is that a good portion, there's always good people in every denomination. I don't even think denominations are person, per, as a denomination, something that's really godly. It's actually more division and uh, confusion. Uh, um, I'm not going to pass judgment on any denomination, but I, I, I believe that there's many, many different denominations that will watch this. So let me say to you, um, holiness, or at least moments of holiness, uh, times of holiness are, are reachable. Uh, and in those times that we're not holy, we need to ask God for help. We need to uh, truly be repentant. We need to find sorrow in the heart. You know, uh, a person that doesn't show any remorse is not sorry, right? You you hear that when you talk about trials and is that person remorseful? Well, um, when you see you're doing something wrong, you need to take it to the Lord and ask for help. Ask for help, for goodness sake. Ask God for the Holy Spirit to direct your moves. Ask God to help you read what you need to read and, and set up a reading program for yourself and read it. Uh, what we do often is we get gung-ho and then we burn out. Just read a little bit every day, pray about it, reread it a few times if you have to. First Peter 1 says, um, Peter's talking to believers. He said, prepare your minds for action. Keep sober in spirit. Fix your hope completely on the grace to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, do not be conformed to your former lusts, which were yours in your ignorance. But like the Holy One who called you, be holy yourselves. Also in all your behavior, because it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. Peter quoted Leviticus 11 or and 19. It's found, that's be, uh, be holy, because I'm holy, is in both of those places when God was speaking to the Israelites. I, I think that um, we have come to a point in Christian growth in this country where we think it's impossible to be holy at any time and so we just try to be pious on Sunday and we go about worldly business the rest of the week we've taught our, it's, you know it's shrouded in our culture and we're at a cultural revolution our pastor says the revolution is going to take place whether we're a part of it or not it's going to happen it's a cultural revolution we have taken everything that's sinful and given it a, a nice delicate name so that it won't offend anyone and so um, murder might be pro-choice. Um, we, we find that, uh, you know, we find people say, well, you know, a little fornication is not a big deal. I mean, after all, we have our needs. I've heard that so many times. I can't tell you 
And the fact of the matter is, it's still sin. Well, I can get up here and rail on on different lifestyles and alternate lifestyles, uh, but the truth of the matter is, pornography, um, lying, um, just uh, being tail bearers, uh, anything, uh, any sin will get you to hell. And uh, those, none of those people are going to make it. We have to be repentant. We have to be seeking the truth. We have to be trying to live the truth. We have to make the Word of God part of us. And that's where we're missing it today is we're become a culture of um, let's be quiet because we don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. And, and I will tell you folks, mothers and fathers, if you're Christians, tell your children and tell them often because they will remember it. Um, so... What does the Bible say about holiness? Can we be holy? What is meant by holiness? Well, it's absolute perfection. God is holy. Absolute perfection. There is, he doesn't look upon, he, there is nothing before him, in him, that is impure. And um, he won't have anything to do with it. That's why we'll never get to heaven without seeking to be holy. Um, another thing that I thought of and I, afterwards is, you know, not only do we profess more, therefore should live more like Christ, but we profess that there's a great, glorious ending coming, and and uh, we need to live a holy life because we profess more, and we seek more, and we hope for more. Um, God's holiness is in everything, and He is His love is holy. His mercy is holy. His mercy is really the first and only thing that's required of you is to accept His offer of salvation at the beginning. Now, after that, you know, salvation without works is dead. That's from James, the book of James. That then you must uh, seek to be holy. You must be, seek to transform who you are. And um, we can do that. But you got to believe you got to do it, and you got to understand that that we are sinners. Uh, if you're lost, you have to understand that um, the first step is to admit that you are a sinner and that you're living a sinful life and that you're living the life for yourself and not for others. Billy Sunday said, you got to get everyone totally lost to get them saved. And I, I believe that firmly. We have to understand and know who we are in order to change who we are. So with that said, let's... Uh, Think about holiness. Our relationship with God will change who we are. We need to be prayerful. We need to be in communication with God at all times. And, and you know, pray without ceasing, the Bible says. And you, that's a frame of mind. You know, when you do something wrong and you're riding, I ride down the road in the car, I'll talk to God. If I, if I have a wrong thought, if I, I get angry, I get a little road rage going on, I just talk to God and say, you know, this is not going to win anyone to Christ, oh Lord. So can you be holy? I hope you can. It's, a, it's difficult to think about a sinless life, but I believe that the Bible tells us that we have to try our very hardest to learn the Word of God and to have it in us and have it to be a part of who we are because words are formative. Words, as you read them and reread them and memorize them, will change who you are. Pastors, preachers, teachers, and everyone... Um, point out errors and to call it, you know, sin mistakes... But let me tell you, you know it. I don't have to point it out to you. If you're lost today and anything I've said will help you, I ask you right now in the name of Jesus just to get on your knees and ask God to receive you. Ask God in his mercy to forgive you and then seek a place that you can be baptized. And you can call anyone, any church, they will do it. Um, baptism is the beginning of regeneration. I truly believe that that's symbolic of going down as a sinner and when you're resurrected and you represent the resurrected body of Christ when you come up out of the water, it also is the beginning of the regeneration and becoming the holy person that God will take to heaven. Let's pray. Father, touch the lost, O oh Lord. Help us to live a holy life that's attractive and that draws people to us and gives us influence over them. Help us, O oh God, to be exactly who you'd want us to be, to know your word and to have it to be part of our character. God, I pray for the 
revolution that it will be really a revitalization and a restoration of the church and revival worldwide. We see and hear stories of Arabs becoming, Muslims becoming Christian. I pray for their safety. I pray for the persecuted Christians in the world and in this country. We ask you, God, in Jesus' holy name, to have your will in your way.